Alrighty, so we're going to be drawing electron dot diagrams, and they're kind of fun to draw. Before we get to that stage, there are four steps in order to really understand what these mean. So the first step is this picture called the Bohr model. This is an atom, right? So inside we have a nucleus where the protons and neutrons are. That's what makes the atom heavy. Outside we have the electrons. Now in reality they are um, moving around. They're moving around the nucleus, but to make things more simple to for us to see, every image you see is obviously still. So it's electrons in place, but just imagine they are moving around the nucleus. So if the Bohr model here shows us where the electrons are located. Instead of showing protons and neutrons, in the middle usually there's the element symbol. So these circles where the electrons are hanging out are called energy levels, or you might see the word energy shell. Right now I have these gray dots. Think of these as parking spots and the element symbol or the nucleus as like a mall or somewhere where you would see a lot of parking spots like Target. So all these parking spots around this really cool place like Target. Now each element remember has different properties like different number of electrons for example. So if we were to look at one element like neon and see where the electrons go, we first have to look at how many electrons can fit on each energy level. Now think of these first two spots here like priority shoppers, right? Maybe those who are disabled or like you see those parking spots that are pickup only. Think of those like that. So there's only two that can fit on that first circle. So two electrons can fit on here. If neon has more than two, they have to go on the outer ring outside of that first one. So energy level one, the blue circle, there's only two electrons. Energy level two, that orange circle, there's eight electrons that can fit on that one. And then the third energy level also fits eight electrons. Keep in mind, there are more energy levels that some elements have. For our purposes right now, we will just be looking at three energy levels just to understand the concept. So if we looked at the periodic table, we would find that neon has 10 electrons. So if I am drawing a Bohr model, I would first fill the first two parking spots because I want to be closest to the store. And then I would move out from there until I reach 10. So if I know level two has eight electrons, the inner circle has two, that equals 10 electrons. What about sulfur? If we look at the periodic table, we see sulfur has an atomic number of 16, which means there's 16 electrons. So again, I'm just filling in these little parking spots here with my electrons. So that should give me 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. <laughs> so easy as that. Now it does help that I've given you these parking spots um, to show you where the electrons go. In reality, again, because we're looking at a drawing, it's not as accurate as what you would actually see if you saw a real atom microscopically swirling around, the electrons are constantly moving, and the distance between the nucleus and these outer rings might be different. But for our purposes, for understanding the concept, let's keep it simple. And just remember, you could always go back to these notes to see how many electrons will fit on these energy levels.